Dr. Jarospina, functionalanatomyblog.com and functionalanatomyseminars.com. Um, what we're going to go over today is a really good example as to why the functional anatomic palpation systems courses are so useful um, for practitioners, even those who feel that their anatomy is, is very strong and their palpatory skills are strong. Um, if you've been following my blog or, or our seminars, you know that the FAP seminars teach very specific uh, manual assessment uh, by way of palpation. Uh, and many of the practitioners that come to the seminars are often amazed um, at how the 3D structure and how palpating live anatomy differs from the way they were taught in school, which is usually a two-dimensional kind of uh, situation. Uh, one of the most common problems that we see, one of the most common areas, is with the levator scapula muscle. The levator scapula muscle is a really, really obviously common area that people believe that they're treating. Um, I think that people write that it's the second most common trigger point, et cetera, et cetera. Now, where people mostly find problems with the levator scapula, if you can bring the camera over here, is they point to this spot right in here, okay? And from this position, they'll take contacts going in this position, they'll start to treat the levator scapula in this fashion here. Now, just to review the anatomy, the levator scapula is coming from finger-like projections uh, on the lateral side of the neck, coming inferiorly to attach onto the superior angle of the scapula. Now, just so we base ourselves in our anatomy, this is the spot where people usually say that the levator scapula is problematic. If we palpate lateral from this spot, we realize that we're actually in line with the spine of the scapula. So being in line with the spine of the scapula, that means the insertion point of the levator scapula is approximately two centimeters superior from this spot. So you can see from the spine of the scapula, in order to get to the superior angle of the scapula, the superior angle of the scapula would be in this region here, which can be very easily palpated by putting the person's arm behind their back, which will tilt the scapula forward and you can feel a very sharp uh, structure in this position here, which represents the superior angle of the scapula. Once again, here is the spine, here is the superior angle. So what this tells us, even though a lot of the anatomy textbooks show the levator scapula from a P to A uh, diagram, the levator scapula is more accurately uh, known or should be more accurately thought of as a lateral cervical muscle not a posterior cervical muscle. So for the actual palpation of this structure, if we put the person's arm behind their back, the one muscle that will be on top of the levator scapula is obviously the upper trapezius. Many people would ask me, how do you palpate through the upper trapezius in order to get to the levator? Well, number one, the first important concept to understand is that the upper trapezius is such a thin muscle that it is almost inconsequential with regards to human, human movement and biomechanics. I'm going to show you the actual fibers. When somebody's just sitting like this, it looks like the contour of their neck and shoulders are, are made by these tra trapezius. However, when you actually look at the upper trapezius muscles, you can see exactly how thin the upper trapezius muscle really is. Can you get that in the camera? The upper trapezius muscle are very, very thin fibers. Most of them are not even uh, muscular fibers. A lot of these fibers are simply fascial uh, or connective tissue. And if you read the article by Bogduct, uh, if you search Bogduct and upper trapezius, he describes in great detail um, how the upper trapezius are not even a, a very important muscle in terms of movement of the shoulder and cervical spine. Okay? So if we go from the upper trapezius, anteriorly from the upper trapezius, the next muscle that we will find will be the levator scapula. So if I take his arm and I tilt his scapula forward, the next muscle that we can flip over in this position here is going to be the levator scapula. We can follow the finger-like projections of the levator scapula all the way superiorly into the lateral cervical spine. So we can actually strum the individual insertions of the levator scapula superiorly. If you wanted to palpate the insertion point of the levator scapula, go to the front, please. You would have to follow this structure down inferiorly until you hit upon the bone of the superior angle of the scapula, which would be located in this region here. Once again, you see that where most people are palpating or think they're palpating the levator is approximately one and a half to two inches off of the actual insertion point of the levator scapula. 
Hence, in the <clears throat> functional range release treatment system, our access to that levator muscle actually occurs anterior to the very paper-thin upper trapezius muscle.